Welcome. Welcome again to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. If you're new here, I like to give weekly recaps almost several times a week. What's going on in the Arizona real estate market? And if you've been watching me for a long time, you know that I don't make long-term predictions. So I thought I'd talk about that a little bit today. What's my opinion? What do I think is going to happen? Why don't I make long-term predictions? Well, let's talk a little bit about how the channel got started. I was sitting uh, watching us stay home two weeks, flatten the curve. Remember that? I thought, oh man, real estate is toast. I mean, you look at all the businesses that were closed. I thought, this this is not good. You're going to see most of the workers laid off and then the white shirts are going to be cut from their jobs and who's going to be able to afford to buy a house? So that, well, let me just update people on what I see on an, almost a daily basis. I started a live podcast at 8.30 in the morning every morning and said, well, what's new now? What we found was... Most of the YouTube updates were, hey, here's what check you're going to get next month. They're going to send you 2000 Well, they're going to send you 1200 All this helicopter money started coming down. California wouldn't let you show homes, wouldn't let you do open houses. Some people in Arizona wouldn't let you do open houses, certain brokerages. Um, worried about the liability. But lo and behold, real estate came back. There was so much money injected into the economy that uh, it lowered interest rates at a unbelievable amount and people went shopping. I didn't see that coming. So it makes it kind of hard to predict going out. Um, I am concerned about the future of real estate, but then there are things that tell me that um, it may go the opposite way. So I thought I'd share some of my thoughts on that. I'm in no way saying here's where the market's going. I'm a real estate agent. I'm not an economist. Um, it is a hobby as it is for most people that are that are on YouTube, except, you know, there's a few people I like to follow. Um, I also like Joe Brown. Uh, he's a great guy. And uh, I love watching the detail that he goes into when he's talking about our, our economy. And so in the armchair economist, he's pretty good. He just puts a cell phone up in his truck and talks to you and tells you what he sees. But he's, you know, he knows what he's talking about. He's kind of fun to watch. Now, I, as a realtor, the only advantage that I have versus the average person is just access to data. That's it. I understand how transactions are formed, what to watch out for, what to do, what to look for as a buyer, what to watch out for as a seller. That's what we do for a living. It's not our job to predict the market. Most of us don't know. Most of us try. So when you're calling a real estate agent, go, well, where do you think real estate's headed? Look, we don't have a base for that. We don't have a base that says, well, here's what's going to happen. A lot of people hung their hat on that before the crash. They had agents, most of them knew going, well, your house just went up $40,000. Just imagine what it's going to be worth next year. Well, that was very ill-advised. Nobody knew what was going to happen next year. Many could see it coming. Many got out. But a lot of people thought, well, okay, I'm already up $40,000. i am going to be up $80,000 next year. If interest rates go up or if my home resets, I'm getting a 0% interest rate now. If it resets, oh, what the heck, I can sell my home. That was foolish, and it burned a lot of people. Well, now it's still right here, 2008. So everybody thinks it's going to happen again. I don't think so. I don't see it. Now, does that mean real estate won't crash? No, that's always out there. But historically, looking at that crash, the magnitude of that crash statistically happens every 70 years. So don't think that it's going to turn around and happen every 10. It just hasn't historically. I read a lot of stuff. Um, I, I get up in the morning and I read Market Watch. I look at the Federal Reserve. Um, I look at AP. I look at so many things before I make a video. But then mostly I look at the Cromford Market Index. I like to look at our data. There are some things that concern me when I look nationally at our numbers. But the one thing that I concentrate on that you're probably getting tired of hearing from me is this one. And it's just our current inventory. Sales go up or down based on that simple number. The number of homes that are for sale and the absorption rate. How many of those homes are being sold. And I look at the number of contracts on a seven day moving average to give me kind of a short term analysis of where things are going. We have an affordability problem that concerns me. It concerns me because so many people can't get into a house, but also I'm looking at that and going, okay, well, that doesn't mean things are going to fall off the wagon. That doesn't mean, mean things are going to crash. Uh, it just means it's harder and harder to get into the house. The other thing that I look at that really concerns me, really concerns me, is our national debt. Look at our interest on the debt right here. 
135 billion. Look at our defense, 891 billion. This is just the interest on the debt. It's like paying that $25 minimum fee on your credit card. You're never paying down the principal. You're just paying the interest. That's what that number is. That bugs me. It should bug every American because we have way too much debt. Now, why should that bug me as a real estate agent? Well, look, I like to buy and sell homes, help people buy and sell homes. If in the credit markets that gets squeezed, in other words, there's just not a much available credit, there's going to be higher interest rates. That'll put severe downward pressure on sales. But at the same time, and this is just my personal opinion, folks, but I thought I'd share it with you. At the same time, the central bank cannot afford to keep interest rates up high for much longer because that's going to cause a banking crisis. And a banking crisis is not good for anybody. So they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. They're trying to orchestrate a soft landing. So that's why I'm watching these numbers going, okay, do I see anything out there that's raising a red flag, a soft landing? Wouldn't that be great? We spent all this money unprecedented. That's the problem. There's no history to go back on. Let me go back and look and see the last time the central bank injected this much money into our economy. Never. It's never happened. In fact, it happened globally. So do you have any history to go back on? No. You can go back to the 1940s when our debt was 124% of GDP. That's the last time we saw that after World War II. But at that time, we were the only country that was producing anything. None of our factories were blown up. So it was pretty easy to come back and in the 40s and 50s be the leader in manufacturing and exporting things and rebuilding England, Germany, and Japan because they didn't have any factories. They couldn't do it. Well, now we're 124% of GDP. How do we ramp up, generate more revenue when we have a giant global economy and everybody's manufacturing. China's growing. Latin America's growing. Um, Germany's growing. So it's a little harder now. And that's a macro level looking at the economy. Can we get a soft landing? That would be great. A soft landing would be we got inflation to go down and we didn't kill the economy or we can gradually start growing again. Now the opposite can happen where inflation goes down, but now we've just kicked the economy in the tail and now we've got major recession that could last for a long time while we try to dig ourselves out of it. Or we could see that interest rates have been tamped back down far enough to where they can't, they can't put them down any further without igniting inflation, but they can't keep them at the level they are now because banking's going to have a big problem. So what are they going to do? They're probably going to say, well, housing be damned. We've, we've got to make sure our banking system doesn't clap and housing could inflate yet again. Hard to believe. But if you have times of high inflation, assets grow, gold does, stocks do, anything you can hang on to grows, cars, especially collectible cars, art, real estate, in high inflationary times, that stuff all takes off. So I'm really, I've got my radar up for that. While everybody's out there saying crash, 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 I'm kind of asking myself, well, what if the opposite happens? Am I going to be left behind? So that's why I'm drilling into the numbers and sharing them um, a lot, saying, here's what I'm looking for four. Now, do I think that we're going to reignite our inflation? I think it's possible. And there's going to be certain things that have to happen that make me see that that's possible. One is the growth of M2, money supply, how much liquidity is back in our market. Boring, 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 right? <laughs> so I keep digging. I keep looking at that stuff. I'm not going to make long-term predictions because I even the big guys are never right. The crashers that have been out there, they're still not right. I saw somebody say on the channel the other day or just this morning, uh, read this book. We got the big crash coming in 2026. And I said, oh, they moved it again. <laughs> we don't know. So if you're into looking at the numbers, looking at the data and seeing what's going on locally and on our market, for example, new home sales have declined nationally, but not here. Real estate is local. It's even more local in your specific neighborhood. Then I encourage you to tune into the channel. I'll try to keep you updated as much as I can. And uh, let's have fun doing it. Thanks for watching. Take care.